Let me show you how I download the beta flight sources, compile them, uh, flash them into the flight controller and do the basic settings. So first we need to obtain the source code of beta flight. Beta flight is hosted on the GitHub repository. So you can grab the clone link there. Then simply install the masses git for Windows and clone the repository. I will be cloning only last 32 commits because I don't want to wait for a long time. I will be cloning it to bf.git directory. Once we have source code downloaded or cloned, we can check the latest commits by git log command. And as you can see, we are working with master branch. This is the branch where the active development is taking place. So the master is equal now to beta flight 3.4. So the compilation of the sources I do in Docker image. You can download the pre-made beta flight Docker image where the whole tool chain is set and you only provide the directory with the source code. So I ran command for starting Docker image. I change directory to my beta fly source code and by triggering make target kakute f4b2 I'll build the hex file for this specific flight controller. Once the compilation and linking is successfully done, you can see some code statistics and the path of created hex file. We will need this hex file in next step when we will flash it to the flight controller. For flashing I am using the beta flight. We need to go to the firmware flasher tab, load our freshly built firmware, plug the quadcopter to the PC, in my case it's COM3. I recommend do the full chip erase if you are upgrading from earlier versions like 3.3 and we can flash the firmware. The flight controller will be fully erased. Then the new firmware is uploaded, verified, and the flight controller reboots. So, flight controller rebooted. Welcome in your custom built beta flight. Now I will guide you through the configuration from top to bottom. We will go through all the tabs and explain the settings. So ports. The Kakute firmware is pre-configured with smart port set on UART1 and serial RX on UART3. I am also using the ESC telemetry on UART5 and smart audio on UART 6. Save and reboot. Connect again. So we are done in ports. Let's move to the configuration. Uh, I'm using the Quadex configuration without uh, motor reversed. I will be using 32K gyro mode 
with 32k gyro update frequency and 16 kilohertz PID loop frequency. I will not use accelerometer, barometer and magnetometer. For the ESC protocol I choose D-Shot 1200. My craft name camera angle. I'm using serial based receiver FRSky with SBUS protocol. I also want to enable air mode. ESC sensor, anti-gravity and dynamic filters. So air mode basically tells the copter it should never disable the PID loop also when the throttle is on zero. So even with zero throttle you can do fast rolls and flips. Anti-gravity boosting the I-term dependently on the throttle. So when you reach some throttle threshold it will boost the I-term to stabilize the nose of the quadcopter. Dynamic filtering is a method when in real time is calculated the most prevalent frequency of the motor noise and the dynamic and the notch filter is added to this frequency dynamically. I will explain this in the next video about filter tuning. I'm not using the beeper, so I disable all these knobs. And this is it for the configuration tab. Power and battery. These values are preset. In the firmware, I only set the maximum solar voltage to 4.2, the voltage scale and amperage meter should be set this way. And you can measure the actual values of voltage and amperage and fine-tune these values. It may differ a little bit for each each uh, flight controller because the current sensing resistor, for example, is not precise. So there is some percentage of tolerance. PID tuning. We can skip this for now. I just set my rates. I'm using these rates. We will take care about all these values in the next video where I do filter settings and PID settings separately. Receiver. This step highly depends on your transmitter configuration. Beginning from channel map to RSSI channel. So I am using the RSSI channel on AUX8. My stick high threshold is 2000 and I know that my transmitter is a little bit bobbling ab around the center plus minus two three points so I set the dead band to this value to prevent the uh, value oscillations affecting the quad movement in the air. This simply means that any visible change must be at least this magnitude, changing from 1500 to 1501 will not affect the movement of the copter. And RC interpolation I set to manual and 23 milliseconds suits me the best. This also depends on your transmitter slash receiver configuration. Modes. 
here you actually bind your aux channels to functionality so my aux one is arm switch and aux four is my beeper motors this step is just for the motor testing so you can spin up the each motor independently and measure the oscillations and so on so there is nothing to configure OSD this I let on your personal preference I just set the capacity of my battery alarm warnings I'm not using the warnings so it can be enabled post flight statistics I don't have GPS so max speed is irrelevant and this is it On the on-screen display I use RSSI value, how strong signal from your transmitter is received by the copter, main battery voltage, current draw just for my curiosity. And I think this is it. I do not use any other value. And I'm using bold font. So let's upload the font. Black box. I am be I will be using the black box for filter tuning so let's set it to onboard flash and 4 kilohertz logging rate now the CLI or maybe expert mode and check the failsafe always Always check the fail safe if it's set properly. You want the drop procedure, and the rest you can leave on default. So, CLI, because we are getting 63% CPU utilization. We will need some CPU overclock. So we set some overclock. Also, the RC interpolation channels, I'm using interpolation on all channels. And it's a good idea to use it on all channels when you have digital transmitter receiver. Next will be more drain old. I'm using increased values here. And this is probably all my all my settings. I guess. Yeah, one more setting the D shot 
beeper because I do not have the separate beeper. I'm using the motors to beep. So I'm setting the D shot peak control to one. Safe. And this is it. I'll see you next time when I do video on filter tuning and PID tuning.